One of the themes that seems to have been threaded throughout our convergence in the mean analysis and convergence in the mean square is that mu must be chosen to be sufficiently small, that there are optimal values of mu, and also that the values of mu are dependent on the eigenvalues of our autocorrelation matrix and or on the trace of the autocorrelation matrix. So in this lecture, we'll talk about the normalized LMS algorithm. And the normalized LMS algorithm uses that information to come up with a algorithm that makes both choosing the step size a little bit easier and also generally converges better for non-stationary inputs than uh, the LMS. So you recall that the LMS algorithm converges in the mean when mu is less than 2 over lambda max. Now, another problem that we have is that this was based on some assumptions. And so based on uh, one of those assumptions was that we had a sufficiently small value of mu that uh, some quantities were could be approximated. Although how small wasn't determined, one thing that we do know is that generally you want mu to be significantly smaller than 2 over lambda max. But that does give you a ballpark range uh, to start from. Another reason to keep mu small is that we want to limit the misadjustment error. Okay, underlying this is the assumption that we have actually computed Rx, but the whole point of doing the LMS algorithm is that we didn't want to do that. Computing Rx could take many operations, and this is particularly a problem if x is not stationary. For example, if we are processing speech, over the course of 40 milliseconds, the signal may be considered stationary. But longer term, it is definitely non-stationary. So estimating Rx becomes problematic. So for those reasons, we would like to come up with a way of choosing mu that does not require us to know lambda max or Rx or the trace of Rx and so forth. So to do this, <clears throat> we'll note a few things that are all coming together, I guess converging, if you will, on a nice solution. The first is that for Rx, it's a positive definite matrix. So, and except in the case of some uh, uh, perverse input vector, such as a constant input vector, so all the eigenvalues will be positive. If that's the case, then we know that lambda max is going to be less than the sum of all the eigenvalues. I've got it less than or equal. It's probably, you can just get rid of that equal. It's going to be less, unless it's dimension 1. Well, as we've already mentioned, the sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the trace of Rx. And the trace of Rx is just equal to, sorry, this is a sum, the sum of the expected value of x squared and minus k. So we can approximate this, since we're in the habit of approximating things in atrocious ways, as simply xn transpose times xn. So this is going to be a sum of the square of all the values in our x vector, uh, sans the expectation side of things. So we're missing that, but there we go. Another thing to notice is that this boxed relationship up here, that mu must be less than 2 over lambda max, is for convergence in the mean. Um, but for convergence of the mean square, we want mu to be less than 2 over the trace of Rx. So the fact that we are 
setting some bounds on Lambda Max as less than uh, the trace all works together so that what we come out with should guarantee that we converge in the mean and in the mean we've got a good uh, mean square performance. So now we can set using the equations up above mu to be 2 over the norm squared of x or the inner product of x with itself. And this is where uh, we bring back in that beta that's been dancing around in the wings. We're going to let mu, and I'm changing this now, to be as a function of n, beta over x transpose n xn. And sometimes we'll add uh, an epsilon uh, here to avoid divide by zero. Well, that's basically the normalized LMS algorithm. So let's take a look at uh, the final weight update equation. We would have W m plus 1 is equal to Okay, a few observations here. First is that uh, this increases the computational complexity somewhat, having the norm of x squared and doing division. Well, first off, we can do some sort of a simplified computation by computing this recursively as follows. We simply use our previous estimate, add in the new sample squared, and subtract out the old one. It requires some memory, but it certainly simplifies computation. It's not very much memory that's required because, in reality, we have to keep the whole x vector in there someplace. So as we get rid of the last sample, we just have to remember what it was. Another thing to notice is that our new normalization factor, this looks just like it did before except for that normalization factor, this new factor affects the magnitude of the gradient estimate but not the direction. So another problem is with the LMS algorithm, if a particular x vector is very large, that can amplify the effect of the noise. And since we have a noisy gradient, that could be a problem. By having this normalization, it makes sure that that noise amplification doesn't take place. Finally, if we are dealing with a signal where x gradually changes over time, it is no longer stationary, maybe quasi-stationary or stationary in the short time, but it, it changes over time, we would have to pick our mu to be constrained by the very largest eigenvector or very largest autocorrelation matrix that we would expect to see over all time as x changes. In this case, however, uh, we are effectively choosing uh, mu appropriate to the signal that is present at the filter at that time. This is wonderful for things like speech processing where the energy in the speech can change by 40 to 60 dB between uh, quiet moments and loud moments. And so the filter can adapt more aggressively uh, when it's quiet and less aggressively when it's loud uh, to compensate for the fact that there's more energy um, driving the adaptation. Finally, just a few more points. <clears throat> One is that the LMS algorithm, uh, the NLMS algorithm, 
uh, converges in the mean square if beta is less than 2. I like to choose something like 0 0.01 in extreme cases to uh, 1 half when I want to be very aggressive with the adaptation of the filter. <clears throat> Finally, if this is to be implemented in an embedded platform, the operation of division is often one of the more expensive things that can be done. Multiplication in many platforms can be done in one or a few clock cycles. But division is an iterative procedure and may take many clock cycles. If that's the case, this can be a little bit of a problem. But one thing that we can do is find x of n, uh, the norm squared, and round it to the nearest uh, MSB. Then this becomes a factor of dividing uh, the magnitude of x by just a factor of uh, 2 to the b or something like that. This could be done by shifting uh, the norm to the right in a uh, computer registered while shifting uh, x of n to the left or vice versa to get rid of, no that would be right. So uh, calculation can be sufficient. We have found actually that approximating this is uh, the division just as a single shift uh, yielded results that were essentially indistinguishable from when we calculated it with full precision. Yes, I did misspeak. We would shift um, the norm squared of x of n to the right and shift x of n to the right the same amount until uh, the norm squared of x of n shifted was equal to 1.